Hi, I'm John Mayer, and welcome to How to Shred. This, of course, is a Gibson Les Paul. Hi, I'm John Mayer, teaming up with the Guitar World to show you the best guitar solos on TV theme songs of the 90s. That, of course, was Beverly Hills 90210, uh, played in the style of Beverly Hills 90210. Hi, I'm John Mayer, and today I'll be showing you how to turn everyone off at parties. Wait, wait. Hi, I'm John Mayer, and I'm going to show you today uh, the inner workings the, and the outer workings of uh, my interpretation of the classic Robert Johnson and Cream song, uh, Crossroads. Crossroads came about not by way of hanging out saying, hey, you know, it'd be cool to cover Crossroads, but more like one of those things that happen in the studio when you're in between working on something you've written, where, you know, you get a sound from a particular combination of instruments and guitar and pedals and amp and stuff, and uh, you sort of follow that sound for a minute, you know. And uh, I'd been recording a tune with Steve Jordan, and uh, Steve was in the, behind the drum kit, a real tight little hip hop kit. And I happened to be plugging something in and uh, I have this fuzz pedal by uh, Pete Cornish called an NG2. And uh, Crossroads is always something that I've noodled around with on the guitar. But there was something about um, whatever the gain structure was, you know, sometimes you get an exciting sort of half volume, strange sustain, big room, too loud sort of thing where, um, you know, the best, the most fun I can ever have playing guitar is when I get rewarded sonically from the smallest bit of work. That's really fun for me. And so I got into this, into this groove from having the guitar volume down about halfway so that it wasn't a full sustain, you know, it, you can almost hear it die, you know. Mm -hmm. You start to lose some of the beats on the guitar. Some of them sort of get choked the way like a voice would, you know? And so Steve just started cracking it, you know? And the, and the reason the song has three verses is because we just didn't, we didn't record it long enough, you know? So we took one of the verses out. It's as much of a right hand thing as it is anything else, you know? It's, uh, it's about the bounce. I sort, of, I sort of think of it in my mind like the bounce, so it's... And it's like timekeeping. So it's like, you're not really thinking about the moment, about creating momentum, because you already have it. So it's really about how you just start it going. So if you're already in it, you know. This is always going, so you sort of you sort of keep yourself in time by how syncopated it is, and um, so yeah, that's how that's how the tune sort of came about. And I, then I sort of go, I sort of just almost just work between my thumb and my you know my forefinger. So when you go. And then the other thing too is a sort of claw method where I'm sort of fanning out my fingers like diagonally so that I can hit, pull all, like the piano style, hitting all three strings at the same time. So then it becomes. You know, 
So it's got that slide. And the thing is, you could, uh, and I even have to remember to play it this way. And the way, the way I played it on the record is not, it's really hitting it, you know. So that's the one. So it's a one, four, five. But instead of the five chord, you know, being the, uh, you know, uh, an E, going back to D, it's a F sharp minor. So it's like a, like a six minor, you know. And then, and then a four. Which kind of freshens up the, you know, the progression. It freshens up the tune. It's one more place to go when you're soloing. That's not just the five chord, you know. The thing is, it's the same, same note pattern on the four chord, so. So I went down. It's the same guitar, same setting as the rhythm guitar, which made me nervous at first because I don't usually like to do that and we like to have a different guitar on top, but there's something interesting and very lo-fi about using the same guitar for the solo as the rhythm guitar. So there's really two of the same guitar coming in when that solo happens. So it's really about playing on the offbeat, sort of. You know, it's got a little bit of clap in the, you know. But it's a little more like a... It's really about not going with your first choice in anything. So picking the, picking the odd concept, you know, you can land on. So two, three, four. And then just waiting. So you're just, you're not playing on the one. You're just sort of playing with the tension of, uh, letting beats go by for, you know, which I'm really, get, really getting into right now, so you can catch people off guard, you know, and then it goes. And that's over. which ends it. So the thing is that I'm always thinking about in a solo is bridging two choruses together. Whenever you have more than one chorus in a solo to go around, um, you, have to, you have to make a part one and a part two to keep people's attention. So that moment where I'm, I'm down here for the first half, like your standard like minor pentatonic. And then there's really like a run that connects the first half of the solo to the second half. So that sort of is the connective tissue to all of a sudden be up here. You know, it's sort of in that BB King, Eric Clapton. The whole song is about tension. It's a very tense, funky thing. So it wouldn't have made sense for me to, do, you know, and it's also such a fast pace that I wouldn't want to go. You know, it's a little too, you know, especially when you're playing a, a cover of not only a Robert Johnson tune, but a Cream tune, which is essentially covering Eric Clapton, you know. Um, I didn't want to just trace over those same lines. So really it becomes just
you know, as, as, as like wild and stop and start as you can be. So the, the great thing about being a guitar player is that we're all really cocky. We all think that we can pick up someone's style and be just like it. So then we think we're just like it, but we're not. We're our own little bad imitation of it that comes, you know, might become something really cool. You're not, you know, and so you, a lot of times we say like, oh my God, it's too this, it's too that. And people listen, they go, well, it's, well, it's not enough that to be that. Like you're not good enough to sound like Jeff Beck, but you're good enough to sound like you with a little bit of that flavor in it. 